Somebody could come after us, but it would be very difficult because we are literally not pointing to data. We're not hosting data. We don't know our customers. We never will. We can't. The network's designed in such a way that when people say to us, who uses that? I don't know. How many people use it? We'll have a rough idea, but we won't really know. And where are they? Well, they're all over the world. They're not in your jurisdiction, that's for sure. But the network will survive, even if the whole UK managed to somehow cut the internet off or America physically cut what you would have to do. The network will survive. And there's a broadcast capability in there now, so even if you switch these things off and switch them on, they all start beaconing and finding each other. See, originally when I was looking at MadeSafe, and I thought, I'm never going to be able to get people to build this. It's, it's too hard, it's too complex, it's too big, and I don't know if we'll be able to get money to build it, to pay people to help. And I was going to write it as a virus and just let it go everywhere and not be stopped. And I think when the network's up and running, it will look very like a virus because nobody will be able to tell who's running it and who's not. I'm just doing a thing at the moment I was where it's actually a dual protocol stack, so it's TCP and UDP, and it switches about just to make it not possible even to say it's a particular UDP port or TCP port or even what the protocol is. The protocol will keep changing. And when you have something that's actually decentralized, the attack point becomes very difficult. Because I've always said, folk can shut me down. They can do what they want to me. I don't really care. Because uh, we're, we're doing this, and that's what we're doing. And this is why we have these pods. I think the pods are hugely important. People can see how to build this thing and, and continue to build it without us being present, which I think is good because it gives a distribution of capability. If, it, if, you're tr if your vision is truly to give everyone this privacy, security, and freedom, and you really want to do it correctly, you want to have this very easy to read code, very easy to understand system that you can distribute that about different pods around about the world. But you also want to have, and we've been very good at this, I think, and, and made safe, you also want to insist in zero ego. There's no ego, there's no ownership. People can add to it and take stuff away. Because I need sometimes, oh, somebody's going to beat you to market or somebody's going to do this. And I think, good. If they're going to give everyone privacy, security, and freedom, brilliant. That's fantastic. I'm totally delighted. But at the same time, I realize that they vastly underestimate the. We, we didn't take eight years for nothing, you know. We didn't take eight years because we're stupid. There's, there's a lot of intricate components that are not obvious and one of the, the things recently with bringing in this new language of the network which is something I'm really excited about it simplifies it down but it also hides some of the complexity and this, this is why you'll see me in the forum banging on and banging and two months ago I caused mayhem in the office by deleting a whole bunch of code that was complex and replacing it with something that was much less complex and it's, a, it's about 50 times less code, 98% reduction. Because it's not only about being free and the software being available and under a license it has to always be free. It's got to be readable. It's got to be something that any programmer that's average or even below average should be able to pick it up and say, I know what this is doing. And it annoys me when you get open source projects like TrueCrypt or even open SSL and you look at it and think that's just a bunch of gunk and nobody knows how that stuff works so sharing that information makes closing the system very difficult and I think it would almost get to the point where you'd, you'd need to change international law to break this thing so lots of governments worldwide I think we'd have to collaborate to try and do something to stop it if you've got something in your hands and you're saying this you know this information is fantastic this is this is great for my children. They're going to do things that I never would have been able to do. Somebody's going to have to pry that out your cold, dead hands. You're not going to. So the population of the of the world or whatever, I would hope, would be in the, the mind that I want I want access to this information. I don't want it taken off me. And it's not so much I don't want Google to own it. Or I don't want thing. It's just I, I want this information. I want this to be available to me. And then you also want to be able to have pictures of your kids or report cards or just papers that you're writing yourself with interesting things that you might invent one day. 
you also want them to be really, really private and personal to you and give them to who you want when you want. So that there, I think, is going to be the paradox because you might have some MI6 spy with his gun wondering who you can point it at and it's just it's the whole planet, you know, and that's that's where we want to be as quickly as possible.